Greetings and praise the Lord. Well, we're in our spring consecration. I hope many of you were blessed by the word of God that came on Sunday. And I'm glad that many joined even this morning with our early morning prayer. And don't forget, we're fasting from sunset to sunrise, 6, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And we're spending that time also reading scripture and being blessed of the Lord. I'm telling you, I am just glad to have this opportunity to, to concentrate and spend some time assuring my relationship with God. And I hope that you are doing the same. Well, as part of our spring consecration, we're having life impact every evening, Monday through Friday, with a word of presentation from the staff, pastors, and myself. I am certain that you're going to be blessed of God as we prepare to return to our in-person service. That's right, this coming Sunday, April 4th, we will be returning to our in-person service here at New Bethel Church on Resurrection Sunday. Oh, I cannot wait to see each of you who have been able to make reservations. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a blessed and an awesome time. But as we prepare, because we will be having communion, serving communion in all three services at 9, 11, and 1, we will be serving communion. So to prepare for that and to prepare to come back to the house of God, we are coming into this time of consecration. Each night, a staff pastor will be delivering the word along with myself. And I'm telling you, we want you to be blessed. Our theme this week is Delivered for Destiny. Hallelujah. When we look back and consider how God delivered each one of us. Why? Because we must now be about fulfilling the destiny that he has set for us. Ah, come on. We're going to be ready to have our first presentation this evening. And then subsequently, each night we have presentations. I'm sure you're going to be blessed. Don't forget, join us with our 15 minutes early morning prayer at 6.15 a.m. And then also your daily scripture reading. Follow along on our website or throughout social media. Come on, it's time to receive the word of the Lord. God bless. Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the New Bethel Church Life Impact. Uh, so excited to be with you tonight to talk about the goodness of God. We have been assigned a great assignment to speak with you from the context of being delivered for destiny. I'm excited to be have, have given the privilege uh, of speaking to this august body of believers. And during a time that is used to consecrate and rededicate ourselves to the Lord, I'm grateful to the man of God for having the wisdom and sensitivity in the spirit to know when to gather the congregation together in efforts to align our focus, that we may be positioned in the will of the Lord. I am equally blessed to have received a, a great word each evening from the other staff pastors and I look forward to the word uh, from our very own leader Bishop Eglin Brady on tomorrow evening as well as on Resurrection Sunday. Well, let's have a word of prayer and we'll dive right into the word of the Lord this evening. Father God, we just come before you with thanksgiving. We thank you and we praise you for your goodness, for your many wonderful works that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Lord, we are so grateful and so thankful that you have been faithful towards us. We thank you for the blood that you shed on Calvary that never loses its power. We thank you for that blood that has made atonement for each and every one of our sins. Lord, we thank you and, and we just pray for a special blessing tonight. 
that those that are listening on this evening will hear the words that you would have for us to hear. That it will transform minds, that it will renew hearts, that it will create in us a right spirit so that we will move forward toward the destiny that you have already predestined for us. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, from the very time that we were born until we reach the point of awareness, we are embarking on a journey. And until we can formulate an understanding of this world around us, our environment begins to both directly and indirectly prepare us for this thing called destiny. It comes in the form of words like purpose or calling. And as we begin to grow and understand our language and how to communicate, we begin to hear about how critical it is to have this thing called purpose, calling, or what you are destined to do, destined to have, or destined to become. Destiny. A word that seems to be at the core of everyone's meaning for existence. What is my purpose for being here? <laughs> Everyone wants clarity or some defining meaning surrounding why we're walking upon God's green earth. Uh, it begins from the time that you were an infant. You as an infant would be passed around the room and everyone would sit around the room and determine your outcome based on your mannerisms, your facial expressions. They would say things like, who do you think they look most like? Who do you think they act like? Who do you think they talk like? Who do you think they walk most like? Who do you think they think most like? And sitting around speaking with such confidence about something that only our creator could know. They may say things like, oh, I can tell by the way that she looks at me and cries that this one is going to be a humdinger. <laughs> or you see that expression on his face when you reprimand him? Oh, he acts just like Uncle Jake. Mm-hmm. And y'all know Uncle Jake ain't never been no good. <laughs> you know, many times negativity is spoken over the life of children who are destined for greatness. But because words carry power, a child's path is placed on another path before even getting the opportunity to choose. Hmm. That's why we have to be careful about the company that we keep around children. Their words could either be of great blessing or their words could be of great detriment. The Bible didn't say that death and life are in the power of the tongue of those who are saved. It says in Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, period. So whether a person has professed Christ or not, what is spoken in the atmosphere has power. That's another lesson for another time. But let's examine while we're here in more detail what delivered for destiny means. I was thinking on our theme for this consecration and as I examined the title, I thought it would be important to get down to the root word, the root of the word and build from there for the root of the word delivered or deliverance is deliver. So let's look at the root word of delivered, which is deliver. 
Deliver means to, number one, bring and hand over a letter, a parcel, or ordered goods to the proper recipient or address. Second definition under deliver is to provide something promised or expected. Example sentence says, he had been able to deliver votes in huge numbers. I'm going to come back to this in just a moment. But we're going to move right on to destiny. The word destiny, number one, first meaning, means the inevitable or necessary fate to which a particular person or thing is destined. One's lot. Many of you have heard the song that says, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it simply means whatever my destiny is, you've taught me to say it is well with my soul. And number two, a predetermined course of events considered as something, get this, beyond human power or control. Now let's dig deeper. And I'm excited about this tonight because I really believe that God is trying to get the attention of us during this consecration week because there is a great revival that is about to happen in this world. And it's critical that we get what God is saying this week. So according to the definition, deliver has two similar but different meanings. Remember I told you that the first part was to bring or hand over to the proper recipient. And the second part of deliver is to provide something promised or expected. That's deliver. Destiny is simply defined as something inevitable. That is a predetermined course of the events that is considered to be beyond human control or human power. Now let's connect the dots. Number one, when you look at the definition of deliver, stay with me, and the definition of destiny. Remember, we're being delivered for destiny. Number one, God is requiring mankind to bring and hand over your life to, what's the recipient? Him. So that what? Second part of deliver. So that he can provide you with what? A promise that is beyond your power or your control. We see this confirmed in Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. It says, therefore I urge you, amplified version, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a, not a dead, but a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be ye transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by what? The renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. So why? So that ye may prove for yourselves what the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Listen to me today. God is not trying to make this thing 
seem confusing. The Bible says, it's not my will that any man should perish. He's simply stating that if you want to get to know what I've destined for you, you've got to make yourself available to me. And when you make yourself available to me, I'll show you my plan. If things are not clear, you have to ask yourself, have you fully presented all of you to Christ? Let's go a little bit deeper. Jeremiah, also known as the, the weeping prophet, was known as such because of the prophecy that he had to deliver to the people of Judah concerning their punishment for idol worship. In Jeremiah 17, we find out the why. But we also find out what life is like if you just obey God. In the second verse it says, Your people, Jeremiah talking to them, Your people worship at the altars and the symbols that have been set up for the goddess Asherah. And on the mountains in the open country, I will have your enemies take away your wealth and your treasures because all the sins you have committed throughout your land. Verse 4, you will have to give up the land that I gave you and I will make you serve your enemies in a land you know nothing about because my anger is like a fire and it will burn forever. Let me give you a little side note. We often look around and we wonder why we seem to be in a vicious cycle that we can never break free from. And sometimes we are where we are because we have consciously chosen the path of man over the path of God. You see, we've made a decision to embrace the things of this world over the promises of God because, get this, our inability to see and have faith in the God that knows the end from the beginning. But let's continue to read on in verse 5 and see what the Lord says. Verse 5, the Lord says, I will condemn those who turn away from me and put their trust in human beings and in the strength of mortals. You see, we place our trust in our jobs in those that have made promises that have not been followed through upon. And our punishment is that we often have to lay in the bed that we made. So just for a moment, if you will, if people were sitting in the audience today, I would tell them to lay your hands on yourself and say, with some things, I have no one else to blame but me. Come on, let's just be honest with ourselves. Some things we put off on the enemy. Some things we allow ourselves to become upset with the Lord. When in actuality, we haven't taken the time to say, have we properly aligned ourselves with what God has instructed us to do? So the Lord goes on in verse 6. And he starts to talk about what then happens to a person that puts their trust in man. He says, he's like a bush in the desert, which grows in the dry wasteland on salty ground, where nothing else grows. Nothing good ever happens to him. But I like verse 7, and I need you to hear me because this is where we're talking about delivered for destiny. 
And this is how to get there. Verse 7 says, But I will bless the person who puts his trust in me. <laughs> and, and he goes on to explain in detail how he'll bless you. He says, He's like a tree growing near a stream and sending out its roots into the water. It is not afraid when hot weather comes, not afraid when the pandemic hits, not afraid when the coronavirus is wrecking the land, not afraid when the unemployment rate rises. Why? Because its leaves stay green. It has no worries when there is no rain. It keeps bearing fruit. So when you place your faith and your trust in God, the Lord is saying that I will give you abundance in a dry place. And when there is calamity that is all around, I will reinforce you with so much life that while death is consuming everything around you your life will flourish while destruction is all around you you will seemingly be unbothered while people are losing their jobs you will not only maintain yours but you'll receive increase I'm talking about if you put your trust in God you won't have to worry who wouldn't serve a God like our God? Somebody just, just a moment, just begin to give God praise. Who wouldn't serve a God that is a sustaining God, that's a keeping God, that if you just trust him, if you just obey him, if you just believe him, he said, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. I ain't got much time, not going to do too much preaching. But who wouldn't serve a God that's this great? Going on into Jeremiah, we're going to dig a little bit deeper. Jeremiah 18th chapter, first verse. It goes on to say, the Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. And I need you to hear this. Beyond everything that I've even said this evening. And he said, Jeremiah, go down to the potter's shop and I will speak to you there. So the scripture says, I did as he told me and found the potter working at his will. But the jar he was making, it didn't turn out how he hoped. So he crushed it back into a lump of clay again and he started over verse 5 says then the Lord gave me this message oh Israel can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay as the clay is in the potter's hand so are you in my hand saints of God people of God hear me God is looking for us to number one bring and hand over our life and get this I didn't say this at first he wants us to hand over our life completely to him so that what number two he can provide you get this with something that he's already promised you and that is expected saints it's amazing how we want God to do all of these wonderful things in and through us but we feel as if we don't have a part to play in our own destiny 
In fact, we, we go so far as to operate in a way that says, well, God, when, when you get ready, you have the power to do it. And until then, I'm going to continue on to live my life and do this. And then when you're ready to heal, when you're ready to deliver me, and when you're ready to do this, then I'll serve you. And then we're upset when things don't turn out the way we would have desired. It's because God is saying it doesn't work like that. It's all because we, we disregard it that we have a part to play in our deliverance. Which then leads to our destiny. One of the greatest downfalls, hear me millennials, hear me. One of the greatest downfalls of the people that are living during this time is we want the promises of God. And this isn't all millennials, but some, this is some of the things that we're experiencing across generations. But it's a time that is more prevalent in this millennial time. We want the promises of God, but we want it on our terms. We want the blessings of God, but we want them on our terms. We want what God has destined for us, but we want what's destined for us on our terms. We have no problem with, with agreeing to the terms of agreement when we're purchasing something off Amazon. <laughs> we have no problem with the terms and agreements that we, 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 we elect to have when we click on Netflix or CBS All Access or Hulu or HBO Max. We agree to the terms and agreements. But we will read through the terms and the agreements of his word and argue with God how his grace is supposed to ignore the fact that you didn't obey his word from the beginning. This is the generation of mankind that will read the facts but believe that you should honor my understanding over the terms and agreement that we signed up for. <laughs> I used to, and this is off note, in high school I was one of, I think, the first black band director, a uh, band um, drum major in our band. And when I was, they would send us all to band camp, don't lie, don't laugh. This is no lie. We went to Bloomington, Illinois, and there were band uh, drum majors from all over the country. And the director, I believe his name was George Parks, and he would stand up in front of, it had to be close to a thousand of us drum majors on this football field. And he would make this statement that we'd have to raise our hands to. And he was dealing with us as leaders. And he would say, raise your hand if you desire to have the number one band in your state. We all raise our hands. He said, raise your hand if you're ever late to practice or if your band students ever beat you to practice. And everybody would raise their hands. And at the end he would say, you can't raise your hand for both. And he would go on a series of raise your hand for this, raise your hand for that, can't raise your hand for both. You see, I would propose to you, raise your hand if you want the destiny of God. Raise your hand if you're not adhering to everything he's commanded of you. You can't raise your hand for both. <laughs> I believe God is saying that. I have a way that is right. And if you would follow me, you would be exactly where you are supposed to be at the time you are supposed to be. The word of the Lord says in Psalms 37, verse 3, Trust in the Lord 
with all your heart. No, I'm sorry. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be thin. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee what? The desires of thine heart. And here it is, verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. There is a place in God that can only be reached when we commit our faith and trust to his ways. There are some things that you will never be able to accomplish until you commit to his ways and trust him. The seasoned saints used to sing a song that says, God's got a way that you can't go over, can't go around it, you can't go under. God's got a way that you can't go around it, you must come in at the door. <laughs> You cannot circumvent the order and the commandment of God. And sometimes we can get caught up in trying to explain that what we are doing is not so bad. We say to ourselves, well, others are doing it and they're doing much worse than I am. I ain't bothering nobody. But the reality is, is not that it is not God's plan for you. Word of God says, 1 Corinthians 6 and 12, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Some of our destinies are being withheld from us because you are holding on to something that has to be let go before the promise can be given to you. Many of you have children. Some of them are given allowances. But at some point you have to teach the lesson that if they don't hold up their end of the bargain, they don't get what you promised. Let me explain. Jill and Johnny are in the same house. Jill is required to clean her room, do the dishes, maintain a B average in all of her classes. But Johnny, in the same house, is required to take out the garbage, vacuum, also maintain the clean room, but maintain an A average and mow the lawn. And sometimes when you start looking left or right and not worried about your business, <laughs> your business with God, you get distracted and miss what God has for you. Why is the responsibility and the expectation different for one than he has for the other? Some would say, well, this ain't fair. Because every parent has to parent their child according to what they see is needed for that child. Hear what I'm saying today. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, I knew you before you were formed within your mother's womb. Before you were born, I sanctified you and appointed you as my spokesman to the world. See, when God looks at us, he may require something from one, but may require more from another because of the nature of their destiny and the nature of their purpose. We mess up by meddling in God. God's business. We find ourselves saying, well, I don't understand why so-and-so can do this and they seem to be blessed abundantly, but I can't. Why? Because the Lord knows that in order for you to arrive at your prophesied place, your process has to prepare you for the place that has already been prepared for you. Your very trial in life was placed in your path because it's tied to your destiny. The very struggle in your life is in some way tied to your lot. Tied to your destiny. And sometimes you can't figure out why 
you were able to stay on a certain job or why you weren't able to stay on a certain job. It's because that you've forgotten that even in a secular arena, God has placed you there to be a light. Sometimes because we haven't fulfilled the destiny of why we are there, God had to remove us because we did more damage than good. <laughs> When you receive the knowledge of the truth, every last one of you become ministers. 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, says, We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Verse 3, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Verse 4, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God. Every person under the sound of my voice today that is employed, if you are professing to be saved, you are on assignment. You were delivered and your destiny in some way is connected to someone in your workplace that needs to know who God is. And when you have that understanding, it's not the finances that controls whether you move on to the next job. It is God that directs you and tells you that I have another place for you to be. You don't get frustrated when it seems like you've been eliminated or released. Your job is done, but I've got another assignment and another place for you to be. You have been delivered for your destiny. You have been delivered to impact the life of someone that needs an encounter with the God of your salvation. So in closing, prayerfully this week, prayerfully, it has been a week of receiving and renewal, recommittal, and restoration. Prayerfully, you have positioned yourselves to receive so that there will be no delay in receiving what is destined for you. As you near the completion of this consecration, my prayer is that you hold fast to the understanding of why you have been delivered. My prayer is that you remember that God is looking for us to, number one, bring and hand over our life to Him so that He then can provide you that promise, that expected end, your destiny. You have been delivered for destiny. May you go in the peace of God and may all your ways acknowledge his presence. God bless you and good night. New Bethel Church family, we pray you were blessed by the worship and the word of life on today. If you need prayer, encouragement, or if you feel a tug at your heart, we encourage you to call our church office or even email us. We have ministers and those waiting to pray with you, to encourage you, and to help you with the next steps of salvation according to the Word of God. You may also even join the ministry, even in the midst of a pandemic. The New Bethel Church is striving to meet the needs of our families and our community in any way that we can. If you would like to sow into this ministry, you may do so online on our website at newbethelkc.org by using the GiveLify app and searching New Bethel, Kansas City, Kansas. You may also mail in your gifts or drop them by during the church office hours, Tuesday through Friday. Now, we do not want the ministry to stop here. We encourage you to connect and be a part of our weekly services. 
We have a prayer call with Pastor Brady every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 6.15 a.m. We also have Life Impact Bible Study live on our Facebook page at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Also on Wednesdays, we offer a food pantry in connection with Harvesters, and it is from 2 to 4 p.m. Our YouTube channel is a great ministry tool that we are able to use to provide services and lessons for adults and children. New Bethel KC TV, connect with us and share those with other family members and friends. Now you may find more information about upcoming events on our website at newbethelkc.org or simply by searching our social media tags at New Bethel KC. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday.